to learn to live the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. It's all free. Okay, so the other day I showed you that I broke the glass in the wood stove. Uh, I've replaced the glass. I've put some high temperature sealant, the sealant that they give you when you buy the gasket material. It comes with it. So I put sealant all the way around the window to help keep the air from being sucked in. I just didn't like the design of it. You saw me put this seal on it, this gasket on it. This gasket is, uh, I just put back on. Then I put, you can see I put sealant around the window there. And that is kind of like a, a rubbery feel to it. So there's be room for expansion and contraction. So a lot of people said that, you know, you got to get rid of the glass because there's just too much potential for it to break. So I really started studying glass. You have tempered glass and then you have ceramic glass. Tempered glass goes to about 500 degrees. So you can't use tempered glass here, but they use tempered glass a lot for ovens and glass top stoves. And the reason they use that is because first you don't go over 500 degrees. Tempered glass is stronger, so you can hit it and it won't break. Ceramic glass, however, isn't really glass, it's a ceramic. And it goes up to, I think, 1400 degrees, which is good because your stove can get up to 1000 degrees, they said. Heat and cold temperatures don't break it. As a matter of fact, they use a lot of this ceramic glass for cookware. If you have a glass casserole dish, that's probably a ceramic glass is from what I'm understanding. So what a lot of people do with that ceramic glass is they take it out of the oven they, and then they stick that ceramic glass underneath water to cool it off and it doesn't break. Well, same thing here. And so you can actually, from what I'm gathering, use wet cloth to wash it when it's still hot. And I know you can because I accidentally spilled coffee on it last year when I was running it and it didn't break. It didn't do anything. It steamed up and that was it. The number one cause of glass breakage is these clamps right here over tightening those clamps which is what i i did when i broke it i was trying to tighten it up to get the seal to seal but what a lot of wood stove installers say you should do is you tighten this screw all the way up i'm just going to use my little pocket knife so you tighten it and then you back it off a quarter turn which is true because when i took the glass off all the screws were loose and that way the glass can float in there so i think the wood stove is ready to go uh, for winter we got all our wood here this is sycamore and i just tested it it was at 14 percent so we got dry wood to get us started pretty excited about winter okay another thing that i need to be somewhat prepared for is my water last year we we did have a problem with the water that being said it wasn't a serious problem every time i talk about the water freezing last year people don't even hear what i'm saying they just hear freezing water and they come up with a solution that really isn't a solution so what we did here has really worked i'm very happy with what happened we moved into the house in january mid-january and in february we had temperatures that are kind of odd for us but it dropped down to zero and below zero. The water tank itself did not freeze until later when I kind of just gave up on the whole thing because it was, it was frozen, it didn't matter anymore. But even at that, it didn't freeze solid. The plumbing did down here, the water pump and the hose and everything going into the house, that's what froze. Now, a lot of people at the time said, light bulb or a heater or you know just all kinds of things well of course we didn't have that stuff we live off solar so we can't put a light bulb in there we wouldn't be able to power it all night now the way what i've done here is i've got ventilation coming from the house those who were with me last year will remember me putting this in so the ventilation is right there now there is a slight mistake i made the ventilation and the hose come up in here so the hose that run into the house goes through the ventilation i should have probably turned the tank around i don't know what i was thinking other than the ease of maintenance on that side it's really easy to open the door and work on it that's why i put it over ease of maintenance so i can take the pump off replace the pump fix the pump do whatever i need i put it over on this side and all of a sudden i become crowded so that's that's the reason i did it 
That being said, I should have just turned the tank around for the heating problem. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my ventilation all the way to the other side. That's a simple solution on how I can fix that. So right now I just got it cut off right here. And then I'm gonna run it down towards the ground. That should keep it from freezing the plumbing. I have a fan on the other side of the, the house here. The ventilation runs all the way up inside in between the shower and the wall. I got a little closet there. And so the ventilation runs down there. And so I got a fan that sucks the air from the ceiling down and into here. Now the other aspect of the heating of the system is the tank itself. When I put water in it, the well water is 60 degrees. So it's automatically hotter than the outside temperature. This box never got below 27 degrees. Even when everything froze up, it, it got 27 degrees down there at the ground and it was about 34 degrees up here at the top. So even though the temperature outside was in the negatives, it didn't get that cold in here. So really what we're talking about is five degrees. I got to increase the temperature in here five degrees. So right before the freeze, I allowed the tank to drain down quite a bit. And then I filled it up with well water. So that raised the temperature of the water, I don't know, let's say 40 degrees. So now we're, we're eight degrees above freezing. And that temperature of the water itself actually helps keep everything warm. And water is a very good heating or cooling source. It retains its temperature for a very long time. So with it being in here, it was getting heat from the house. It, it took a long time for this to cool down. Again, once it did freeze, it didn't freeze very solid. I could break it with my hand. It, it probably got right at 32 degrees. So using nature itself, I was able to keep it warm really well. Again, we got an extremely low temperatures. Now, a lot of people said I need to insulate underneath the tank. Well, you don't want to do that because then you're blocking the heat that comes from the ground. The ground itself provides heat. If you go down 18 inches, that's below the frost line here in Missouri. You want that heat to come up from the ground. That helps warm the tank also. So if you put insulation in there, that would stop the whole process. Now, I have a backup plan. In case the tank does freeze, I can run the well directly into the house. So I would just disconnect the tank from the water heater. I would turn the well on because I run it off my generator or my solar panels. I would run the well pump right into the water heater. I go run it right through this window. I got hoses all laid out. And that way, uh, you know, a couple times a day, I could turn the well on, run it. We could do our dishes or take our shower or fill our buckets or whatever we wanted to do if that froze. My goal is, is to not let that freeze again. Now, as I said in a previous video, we've decided to buy a Mr. Heater Portable Buddy, and that will heat up our house. If for some reason the wood stove doesn't work, we're gonna use it as a backup. The Mr. Heater can heat 225 square feet. Our house is 198 square feet. It, on high, it uses one pound of gas every five hours. So a tank, you know, those little small propane tanks, that would be five hours. Well, of course, I bought the hose and the filter and all that, so I can use the big tank, that's 20 pounds. Now, I did find it at Bass Pro, a manufacturer refurbished one for $49. They got 19 left. So I went ahead and got that. Uh, that was a half price, that was a big deal. So I was able to get the filter and the hose, 12 foot hose, for under 100 bucks when you normally buy these heaters for 100 bucks on the nose, plus all the other stuff. So what I'm gonna do is if it's going to get cold or we think it's gonna freeze, I gotta monitor the temperature. I did monitor the temperature. I have this indoor-outdoor thermometer. So inside, the thermometer will read the temperature out here. There's a little receiver outside here that sends a signal to the thermometer, tells me what the temperature is. I put that on the ground. And when I see that the temperature of the tank is going to get below 32 degrees, what I'm going to do is take that Mr. Heater, I'm going to take this door off, and I'm going to bring it out. I've got a whole plan that's going to be hard to explain. I'm going to wrap insulation around it, and then I can put that heater in there. Now, I know somebody's going to say, oh, that's not safe, it's going to burn up. There are distances in the instructions to how far to keep it away from things. So as long as I follow those instructions, I'll be fine. 
we used one of those mr heaters when we were in a pop-up camper now pop-up camper is very small we were nomads and we started out our adventure in a pop-up now i know somebody's gonna say well didn't it burn down yes it burned down but we weren't home and the heater was off so it had nothing to do with it somebody burned it down it was arson but we used that here in missouri down to I, I don't know it was ridiculously cold 18 degrees and it worked really well in pop-up and there's no space and there's but there was plenty of distance nice thing about the mr heater is it has an oxygen sensor so if it runs out of oxygen it will shut off it has an overheat sensor it has a tip over sensor so there's a lot of sensors on it that keeps it safe and they do say that you can use them in tents so if that tells you anything pop-up camper being a tent camper so what i'll do is i'll pull this wall out i'll wrap it up with insulation i'll put the heater inside on a concrete block and I'll, what i'll try to do is i'll raise the temperature of the tank that's the key if i can raise the temperature of the water to 40 45 degrees then that'll help keep everything warm in here on those really harsh cold days in february now this takes away from my electric problem is it totally off grid oh rob you're using propane if something really happened where i have to be completely off grid because i know what everybody's thinking what in case you know the world comes to an end well if something like that happens i still have the well pump backup plant i don't think we're going to have any problems this year i mean there might be an unforeseen problem like you know something breaks but as far as the normal cycle of winter, I think we got it covered. So I hope I can inspire you to be excited for the next season when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.